So we did another experiment. We got a big group of students to uh, be in the experiment, and we prepaid them. So everybody got an envelope with all the money for the experiment, and we told them that at the end, we asked them to pay us back the money they didn't make. <coughs> OK? The same thing happens when we give people the opportunity to cheat. They cheat. They cheat just by a little bit. All the same. But in this experiment, we also hired an acting student. This acting student stood up after 30 seconds and said, I solved everything. What do I do now? And the experimenter said, if you finished everything, go home. That's it. The task is finished. So now we had a student, an acting student, that was a part of the group. Nobody knew there was, there, it was an actor. And they clearly cheated in a very, very serious way. What would happen to the other people in the group? Will they cheat more or will they cheat less? <clears throat> Here is what happens. It turns out it depends on what kind of sweatshirt they're wearing. <laughs> Here's the thing. We ran this at uh, Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. And at, Carnegie, at, at Pittsburgh, there are two big universities, Carnegie Mellon and University of Pittsburgh. All of the subjects sitting in the experiment were Carnegie Mellon students. When the actor was getting up, was a Carnegie Mellon student. He was actually a Carnegie Mellon student, but he was a part of their group. Cheating went up. But when he actually had the University of Pittsburgh sweatshirt, <laughs> cheating went down. <clears throat> now, this is important because remember, when the moment the student stood up, it made it clear to everybody that they could get away with cheating. Because the experimenter said, you finished everything, go home, and they worked with the money. So it wasn't so much about the probability of being caught again. It was about the norms for cheating. If somebody from our in-group cheats and we see them cheating, we feel it's more appropriate as a group to behave this way. But if it's somebody from another group, these terrible people, I mean, not terrible in, the, in the, this, but somebody we don't want to associate ourselves with from another university, another group, all of a sudden people, awareness of honesty goes up, a little bit like the Ten Commandments experiment, and people cheat <laughs> even, even less. <clears throat> so what, what have we learned from this about cheating? We've learned that a lot of people can cheat. They cheat just by a little bit. When we remind people about their morality, they cheat less. When we get bigger distance from cheating, <coughs> from the object of, of money, for example, people cheat more. And when we see things of cheating around us, particularly if it's a part of our in-group, cheating goes up. Now, if we think about this in terms of the stock market, think about what happens. What happens in a situation when you create something where you pay people a lot of money to see reality in a slightly distorted way. Would they not be able to see it this way? Of course they would. What happens when you do other things, like you remove things from money? You call them stock or stock option, derivatives, mortgage-backed securities. Could it be that with those more distant things, it's not a token for one second, it's something that is many steps removed from money for much longer time. Could it be that people would cheat even more? And what happened to the social environment when people see other people behave around them? I think all of those forces worked in a very bad way uh, in the stock market.